She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget-minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Slap on all your blue eye shadow, watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide. Unexpected guests at the mobile home in T minus 20 minutes in counting. Hi there, my name's Jolene Sugarbaker and I'm the Trailer Park Queen. And welcome to my second episode of Cooking with Jolene. It's my great new cooking series which I take you into my Trailer Park kitchen to cook down home, stick to your stomach things, using what's on hand and what's on sale at the store. I know you have a budget, I have a budget too, and I'm hardly making it. So, let's start thinking differently in the kitchen and using ingredients that you may not have used in the past, like beets. Today we're going to take beets and turn them into a fancy dessert for our unexpected uh, guests that are stopping by soon. And we're also going to go back to ancient times and learn how to do it the Greek way. The Greeks used to make these waffles that were for dinner, not for breakfast. So we're going to serve dinner waffles, which are nice and have a great tomato sauce on top of them with lots of cheese too. It's kind of like their own personal pizza. And I'm going to show you how to make easy hors d'oeuvres that are easier on your stomach than jalapeno poppers. They're called pickle poppers. And they're made with that jar of pickles that's been in your refrigerator for who knows how long. So, come on and join me, Jolene Sugarbaker, for another episode of Cooking with Jolene. And come on into the Trailer Park Kitchen. Have you ever thought about deep frying a pickle? Oh no, they're on their way. And you know, I like to be fancy and try the to show them that, you know, I know all about the whole appetizer thing. So, you know, a lot of people can't handle the, the jalapeno poppers because they just burn a hole right in their stomach. But I know something that I can replace the jalapenos with, and I bet you have a jar in your refrigerator too. I'm going to show you how to make a great hors d'oeuvre using pickles. I bet you have a jar of pickles in the back of your refrigerator too. But did you know that you can make a great hors d'oeuvre for people that maybe have trouble eating the jalapeno poppers? You can make them with pickles. So let's go on ahead and I'll show you how. You'll need a jar of any kind of pickles. You'll need some salt. Ground cayenne pepper, garlic powder, Montreal steak seasoning. You need some hot sauce too, and you can use any kind. You can use the Tabasco sauce, you can use the, the, the hot chili sauce. I'm using the foreign people sauce, so you can use whatever's on sale. And you need some beer. I'm using Christmas beer this time. Somebody left it over here at my trailer, and I, I'm going to use it for this hors d'oeuvre. One and a half cups of flour. You'll need a skillet pan and some pure corn oil, whatever kind's on sale. I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in the pan and I only want about one to two inches of oil that's going to be heating up here in my pan. And I want it up on high because this has got to reach about 375 degrees 
you don't have to th have a thermometer to, to check it. Just know that it's got to be really hot to make these nice and crispy and a, a great little hors d'oeuvre for your, your unexpected guests. So I've got this up on high here and I'm going to be very careful because oil in the kitchen is very dangerous, especially in a mobile home. We know how much they go up in smoke with just a little bit of a cigarette ash let alone an oil fire. It's totally terrible. So please be careful in the kitchen with the oil. I'm going to make sure my oil is okay on the oven, so I'm not going to go away too far. But in another plate area, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the pickles ready for the hot oil bath. I'm going to go ahead and get the dry ingredient coating for our pickle poppers together, and I'm going to go ahead and use a half cup of flour. I'm just going to put that in the plate here. Go ahead and use a paper plate because you don't want to be wasting dishes and you don't want to, to be washing dishes when your company's coming. Okay, to the flour I'm going to add some ground cayenne pepper, some granulated garlic. I like a lot of garlic. I found this fancy salt on sale. It's already prepackaged in one of those grindy things. So we're going to go ahead and add some salt here. This is my favorite, Montreal steak seasoning. And some hot sauce. And some paprika for color. And I'm going to go ahead and add about a one-fourth cup of beer to this. As again, I'm using the Christmas beer somebody left over at my trailer. And I'm going to add about one-fourth cup to this to make a batter. We're going to go ahead and mix that one-fourth cup of beer into the dry ingredients and spices to make the batter that to coat our pickle slices to make the pickle poppers. Once again, you can use any pickles that happen to be in your trailer refrigerator. Go ahead and take some of those out of there. Just pick them out. I'm using the little baby ones. I like them. They're cute. And we're going to go ahead and just cut these. Helps if I let you see what's going on. Go ahead and cut these into little chunks. If I can get my silverware drawer. Don't you hate when you can't get your silverware drawer open? And set off the fire alarm. And then all we're going to do is we're going to coat them into this batter. Just go ahead and use your fingers. Don't worry. Your guests will never know the difference. To make sure they're fully coated because, you know, they need to be coated so they get nice and crispy with the, the coating mixture. We're going to go ahead and go over to our oil, which we've been keeping an eye on. Our oil is nice and hot, and you can test that if you have a little bit of water and you just... Wow, that is hot. So we're going to be a little bit careful here and turn it down just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and put our pickle poppers in here. go ahead and just put them quickly in there. Make sure that you get the batter on them because that's the best part. We went ahead and made sure that we had them well coated. I'm going to mix them around here. Look at that one. That one's really pretty. Go ahead and take them out of the oil before they turn dark brown because then they don't look so hot. 
These are just much better than the jalapeno kind. They're better for your stomach or ulcers or whatever happens to be your malady. We're going to go ahead and just put all our pickle slices through the hot oil bath for our hors d'oeuvres. You know, I found out that pickles have to be fermented outside in these big open vats without any cover at all. You know, haven't they ever heard of the dollar store? Tarps are only one dollar, and they can cover right on up, and Mr. Birdie flying above doesn't have to do his business in my pickles. You know, I've just looked in my refrigerator, and I don't really have anything fancy to fix them. But I know what I can bring back from the Stone Age times. Well, not necessarily the Stone Age times, but it has been happening for a long time in history. Did you know that waffles were originally a savory, that means like a spicy or an entree type thing, before they were actually like a breakfast meal? So today, I'm going to bring back dinner waffles. You'll need a waffle iron. I picked this one up for three dollars at an estate sale the other day. I live for estate sales. You'll need some tomato sauce or whatever kind of spaghetti sauce you have on hand. And you need some cheese. Try to get some, some white cheese, not some cheddar. That's nasty looking. A box of your favorite baking mix. I like the famous bacon mix. Instant onions. Garlic powder. I went ahead and ran over to my neighbor's yard who has an herb garden. No, not that kind of herb. I mean spices. And I got some oregano. You can use the dry stuff that you get at the dollar store or take it from your neighbor's yard. I went ahead and put one fourth cup of the dry milk in here with one and one fourth cups of the water. I'm going to go ahead and just mix that around there. I'm going to go ahead and add the famous bacon mix to it. Some of the garlic powder. Go ahead and add two eggs to this. I hate when I get the shell in there. There we go. Some of the minced onions. Put in some of the crushed up oregano. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the dry oregano too. Okay, we have heated up our waffle iron here and we want to spray that down so it doesn't stick. You can use any cooking spray with that or you can take a paper towel with some oil and wipe it down. Just be careful if you've plugged it in already. ahead and take our dinner waffles out using a dollar store spatula. Don't you pay eight dollars for a spatula at those two name stores. Just go down to the dollar store and get you a dollar spatula. Making the topping is easy. You can be Italian too. Just go ahead and grab any kind of prepared spaghetti sauce. Add some Italian seasoning, maybe some garlic powder. I like it hot, so we're going to go ahead and put in some cayenne pepper, maybe even some hot sauce. You can go ahead and simmer some of your neighbor's oregano in there. 
go ahead and put that in there. And I like to add a little bit of the cheese to the mixture to make it nice and rich for the topping of the dinner waffles. And this is going to be the topping for our ancient Greek dinner waffles. We're going to go ahead and plate our dinner waffles, and it's really simple. Go ahead and use a fancy paper plate. Take two of the waffles, put them down like that. Take some of your tomato mixture that you've mixed up on the stove, pour it on top there. Mm, that smells so good and so Italian. It's just got a rich flavor to it. We're going to top off the dinner waffles with some shredded cheese. And there you have it. Dinner waffles in an instant. You know, a lot of people don't like beets. I don't like them either. Well, out of a can, that is. But I always seem to end up with a can of them in the back of my cabinet. And I don't know what to do with them. Well, today, I need a fast dessert for my guests. And I'm going to show you how you can take beets and turn them into a great dessert to feed your guests. They'll never guess. You'll need a can of beets in water only. One and a half cups of flour. You'll need four eggs, too. You'll need a half cup of butter. About four to six ounces or whatever amount of chocolate that you have lying around. I like to use the one with the almonds in it. You'll need a cup of brown sugar. Make sure it's packed down, too. One cup applesauce. And some baking powder. One teaspoon of vanilla. And some almonds. Make sure they're chopped finely. You'll need some cinnamon and some nutmeg. You'll need a dash of salt. I went ahead and put a half cup of butter in there. And I'm just going to use a big chunk of the candy bar and throw that in there. We're just going to add a little bit more. You just can't have too much chocolate in anything. We're going to melt this around on medium heat, making sure that it does not burn, but that it gets well mixed. We're going to go ahead and turn these beets into a fantastic dessert for my unexpected trailer guests here. I'm going to go ahead and put them in a bowl there. They smell kind of funny, so don't worry. It's going to totally disappear once you cook it. We're going to go ahead and mash up the beets. Natural color. It can get on your clothing and stain it. The ancient people used to use it for like a clothing dye. Today, we're going to make a dessert out of it. So we're going to go ahead and put our eggs in the bowl. We want to beat four eggs until they're frothy and about one and a half cups of flour. Now I know you're supposed to add this at a slow pace, but I don't have time, so I'm just going to go ahead and dump it all in and hope for I'm the best. I'm going to add the chocolate mixture that we melted down on the stove earlier. Okay, I went ahead and mixed in all the ingredients, and we're going to put this in the oven into a greased 9 by 13 pan. Spray down a 9 by 13 pan. They say this fake butter stuff is like bad for your lungs. People died of it. I don't know.
I like to go ahead and top it with the slivered almonds on the top. It makes such a nice presentation that way. We're going to go ahead and stick it in our preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. Today on Cooking with Jolene, I showed you how to do it the Greek way. And you can do this in your trailer too, so therefore it becomes a trailer park way now. You know, my guests are right around the corner, but I wanted to make sure that I tasted the dinner waffles before they got here. And you know, they're really great. They smell like garlic and onion and that great sauce that you made on top of it. And you can take some of the sprinkled Parmesan cheese and just top it off and make it look real nice. You can add extra cheese or whatever you like to the top and maybe even some pepperoni. Tune in next time to Cooking with Your Lane and I'll show you how to fool your guests next time too.